This is a Wi-Fi controlled scoop I've been working on to dive on my underwater drones. It works using a 9 gram servo that I waterproofed. In this video I will of course show you how I did that. I'll also take you with me on a sample return mission where we find out if the scoop setup can collect samples in the ocean. In my last video I used the Wi-Fi enabled ESP12 eboard to collect pressure and temperature data from outside of my ROV during a dive. This time I want to use Wi-Fi to control some external hardware without having to drill any new holes through my ROV's watertight sphere. My goal for this video is to build a Wi-Fi controlled scoop and bring back a sample of the seafloor. My idea to collect the easiest possible sample is inspired by NASA's old Phoenix Mars lander. To collect Martian soil samples, it basically used a simple scoop rotated by a single servo motor. And to do that in the ocean, I am going to have to waterproof one of these, the humble 9 gram servo motor. Step one is to get out the tiniest screwdriver I could find and totally disassemble the servo. I remove both lids as well as all of the gears and the motor before I mix some epoxy to coat the tiny circuit board with it. Next up was filling the servo's gearbox with a magical fluid that is incompressible so the box doesn't deform and let water in but also a substance that doesn't conduct electricity. The secret sauce is mineral oil. It doesn't conduct any electricity and it's intensely hydrophobic. That's chemistry talk for it'll keep water out of my electronics. Here I'm using a pipette to push mineral oil into the little motor. Next, I throw all of the servo pieces into my little bucket of oil. I reassemble my servo motor while it's entirely submerged in mineral oil. That way, the mineral oil can coat every nook and cranny of the motor. After all this oil business, I completely forgot how all the gears fit back inside the servo. So that's why I take out my iPhone here to look at a picture I took of the servo before I took it all apart. At last, I tighten up those screws to seal the box and remove the servo from the oil. Then I slide this rubber o-ring over the gear head until it's flush against the gearbox. This will get tightened more when we screw the scoop into place. I finish up the waterproofing by brushing some 5 minute JB Weld epoxy along the seams where the box panels fit together. Now it's time to design an attachment point where I can mount the servo as well as the scoop. This is the setup I created using Fusion 360. I made an inset area on the bottom of one of my standard weight containers. This hides the servo underneath close to the seabed. 9 gram servos don't create a lot of torque. So the scoop is actually designed to cut through sand with as little friction as possible. To do that, I gave the scoop an outer panel that follows a turn radius centered on the servo's gear head. When my designs looked ready to go, I fired up my Ender 3 and got printing once again. make sure the finished scoop doesn't slip off of the servo's gear head, I'm actually attaching it using one of the standard nylon arms that came with the servo. The servo is now screwed onto its modified weight container, which means I finally get to attach the scoop. 
I need to tighten it to the point where the o-ring fills in any gaps that might let oil out the water in. However, I also have to make sure that it's not so tight that friction prevents the servo from turning. It'll require some experimenting, so the next thing on my plate is to build a setup that'll get this thing moving under its own power. The Wi-Fi enabled ESP12E is the perfect port to get us scooping wirelessly. First, I create a power server that contains a battery and a micro USB charger. Now, I drill a small hole in the side of this dry box built by Cressy and feed into it the servo wires from the outside. Now it's time to write the software. This uses a switch to generate commands on my Android device. Then, it sends it to the Raspberry Pi on board the submarine, which finally transmits the commands via Wi-Fi to the ESP12E controlled scoop. To do this, I create a software object called a socket that goes into each of the three devices. Before wiring up the servo, I send a test message to the socket on the Raspberry Pi, and it looks promising. Next, I write and test the ESP12E socket using the Arduino IDE. With all that software out of the way, it's time for a dress rehearsal. I flip the switch on my Android tablet. Incredible! The scoop runs! I flip it one last time to get the scoop back in the stowed position, and it looks good. The only question that remains now is whether this thing will work in real life in the real ocean. A still morning in Dana Point offers the perfect conditions for a sample return mission. After the ROV is ready to go, I push the button on my ESP12E's power circuit. Then I seal my Cressy dry box by screwing the two halves together. Now that the dry box and modified weight container are screwed to the ROV, I can lower the sample return payload into the water. I pilot the sub away from the floating platform to dive straight down onto what I think is some soft sediment below. Down here, the seabed has a pitted, almost lunar surface. It's a telltale sign of clams and worms that make their homes in the soft sand. I fly my Model C a little ways away from the floating dock to an interesting looking rock outcrop. When I get there, I run my vertical thrusters to press my ROV into the bottom. In the cockpit, I flip the channel 1 switch to get the scoop turning, just like on my desk. And turn it does! The problem is, my scoop hits a rock, invisible underneath the soft silt. Nothing. I return to the surface in shame, empty-handed. But it's not over yet. The thing is, I had a little bit of battery left in the scoop, so I figured I'd try to take it for another dive and try to redeem myself. On this descent, I aim for those holes. If it's soft enough here for clams to dig, it should be soft enough to scoop up a sample. Come on, bring me some mud. Yes! This time it cuts right through the silt. I carefully back off from the seafloor. After all this work, I don't want to swish away my precious cart. So I head to the surface very slowly. And there it is. A scoop of mud fresh off the seabed. As the final part of this dive, I empty the sample into a storage container. Mission accomplished. So, I've taken the servo on quite a few dives now, and 
and it works great. <laughs> to be honest, I was not expecting this uh, at first to work at all. I was expecting for the little motor to get ruined as soon as it tried to turn underwater. But that didn't happen. I want to take this servo a little deeper to find where exactly its limits are. And I also want to try waterproofing a higher torque servo, maybe to move around an entire robotic arm. But that is for a later adventure, and I'll see you there.